All right, students, welcome. Mr. Campbell is back here with day two of, the, of this week uh, and getting into, uh, we finished yesterday, Origin of Life Theories. Today, we're going to look a little bit at fossils, specifically fossil record and how it helps us better understand evolution. Or no, no, excuse me, not evolution, I sh um, should say, better understand uh, plate tectonics. Okay, we'll get into that in a second. But for but let's go ahead and recap the other day, uh, talking about the um, different origin of life theories, right? So quickly, again, write this down in your notebook on page eight. I need you to briefly explain the origin of life theories in your own words. So letter A would be hydrothermal vents, B would be panspermia, and C uh, would be of those two, which one do you think is more likely to be the origin of life and why? Okay, some important announcements. Grades are being updated. Uh, they will be updated through the week and this weekend. I'm going to really uh, get those all done. And we've got a, from my in-person class, uh, classes, um, lab tomorrow. So uh, for us, I'll have an alternative assignment because it's not possible for us to do that lab if we can't be in person, which is no problem. Uh, again, we won't have a test next week because you guys have a unit quiz every week. So that takes place for that. Uh, and then don't forget, Students that we have the syllabus signatures, take a picture of the signature turned in. Again, submit those online and take the syllabus quiz if you have not already, okay? But as for our Go Blue questions, guys, vents, again, anything with deep seawater, deep seawater volcanic vents that uh, provide life through chemosynthesis. Again, those, those creatures, the two worms that you see here, the crustaceans, uh, all those things are consuming. There's a lot of life down there as we saw in the video yesterday. And again, that's taking place through chemosynthesis. Why? Because there's no, there's no sunlight down here in this part of the ocean and they need life, they need energy through those chemicals, okay? And as for B, panspermia, again, life, uh, organic molecules being brought to Earth from a comet or asteroid. Maybe it was bacteria living, maybe it was just the elements that, needed, that were needed for the bacteria, but the, uh, as you would have seen from yesterday's video as well, can bacteria survive an explosion from an asteroid or comet impact? Yes, it can. So, again, keep that in mind. Both of these are plausible ideas. Um, I would say for letter C, you could argue either one being the true one. Uh, they have a good amount of evidence supporting each one of them. You could argue either one. As long as, you would, as, long as you're able to explain it, I would mark it as correct because I think they're both very good theories in my opinion. Okay, uh, but let's continue again. Uh, table of contents in your notebooks, guys, page eight through nine. Again, make sure you need to be keeping up with your notebooks. We have our first notebook check coming up in a few days. You'll need to take a picture of those. Keep me up, uh, that way I can grade you on that to make sure you're doing the work that we would otherwise be doing in class. So make sure you do that, okay? Again, pause the video as we go along. Ignore this lab stuff. Um, let's go ahead and look at our questions for today. So ignore all this. A theory explains the what of a scientific concept while laws explain the why and how. Think about it, ponder it, pause this video. Let's go ahead and check it out. The answer is gonna be true. Oh wait, oh, it's false, my bad. Um, so theory is what, laws are why and how. Okay, theory is going to describe, it's going to be uh, descriptive and explain. So why and how? While laws are more direct, more concrete, they're more forward, it is the what, okay? Our next practice question of today. All of the following are homologous structures to one another except, and pause the video. A, eagle wing, B, dragonfly wing, C, penguin wing, or D, finch wing. Again, when I think of homologous, I'm thinking of relation. I'm thinking of similar ancestor, right? So which of these four is the least related? You guys remember this from last week, I bet, it's letter B. Insects are least related to birds that we see here, eagles, penguins, and finches. Okay, homologous is gonna be relation, common ancestor. Analogous is going to be function, right? So if it was function, instead it would be C, right? But we're talking about relation. Sorry, guys. Okay, uh, vocab again. 1 through 15, that's online, that's due, don't do 16 through 21, only do 1 through 15, that is due next Friday. Let's go ahead and go to our new notes for the day. If you guys are to go to page nine, 
Um, I just want you to record these few things down. Just, just a few quick things that you see here. Uh, go ahead and write these questions down on page eight or eight B uh, for our first video. Uh, number one, how did fossils contribute to the theory of plate tectonics and whose idea was it? You need to list examples. And number two, what was Harry Hess's idea regarding plate tectonics? I'm going to go ahead and give you a sample of this, just a, a, a less than a minute sample. And it is your responsibility to make sure that you watch all of it on your own. Let's go ahead and check it out. rubs together and pulls apart seems obvious now. Oh, I mean, just I look at it. But as recently as 50 years ago, anything. thinking the continents had ever actually yeah. moved from their current locations would have gotten you left out of any serious scientific meeting. The notion of moving continents all started with Alfred Wegener. And that answers our first question. Who was the person who came up with the idea of plate tectonics, theory of plate tectonics? Alfred Wegener, as spot right there. He noticed the continents appeared to fit together almost perfectly like a jigsaw puzzle. And if they used to fit together, that means they must have somehow moved apart. This led him to introduce a new idea, continental drift. The snug fit of coastlines wasn't the only evidence that the continents were all once joined together in a giant landmass, all nice and cozy. Wegener noticed fossils of certain animals had been found in Antarctica, India, and Africa. How did the same animal end up all over the world? Before geologists thought- So, they thought they crossed through bridges, right? So the, the idea is, how do I have the same species of fossils, same exact fossils, being located in far, far away continents? I've got the same one in Antarctica all the way up here to India, right? Well, people thought there were bridges. That was not the case. People thought maybe those creatures swam across the ocean. Not, not even close to the case. Because one of those fossils that they found was a fern fossil. And if you know anything about ferns, they are plants. Can plants swim? No, they cannot. Why was this the case? This was the case because the continents were once all together as one supercontinent. I know you guys know about this, right? So you need to watch the rest of that, okay? That answer is number one, all right? And you need to find out, oh, you can see the answer there. So Harry he has his idea regarding plate tectonics was sea floor spreading. Why are the continents moving? It's because in parts of the ocean, there's these ridges where magma comes out where the plates separate and that's, we call that sea floor spreading. What I need you guys to do is just quickly or briefly, I've got two little, two slides. I just want you to write down what's here. What are fossils, okay? Well, fossils, uh, we know them as the bones in the ground, preserved traces of animals or plants found in rock. But what happens over time is if you look inside of a, a bone, it's got little holes inside of it. And over time, those holes fill up with water and then mineral, okay? And the bone then will eventually dissolve, and that bone gets replaced by minerals. And these are basically mineral stamps of bones. They're not bones anymore. They're mineral, they're mineral versions of those bones, okay? So they show what time periods organisms live based on depth and type of rock. So keep in mind, the deeper the fossil is in the ground, the older it is. Okay, and also shows biogeography. So I'm gonna go ahead and again, make sure you record and write that down on page nine. Again, this is page nine of your notebooks, page nine. Um, you should have written that down and pause the video. Let's go ahead and see how, we, how those fossils are kind of collected through the first you know, minute of this video. Again, this is no longer bone. These are now minerals that have gone inside of bones. Prehistoric life embedded in rock. Either the actual remains of an animal or plant or an impression left by decayed remains. Most fossils are millions of years old and remind us that humans have been around for only a small part of the Earth's existence. Fossils are manufactured by nature, but collected and preserved by man for display in museums as well as in private collections. So we see a great example there, right? And again, it's up to you to watch um, only half, you need to watch half that video. You know, the rest of it kind of just kind of shows. Let me just see this real quick. because kind of chisel away, really cool. Chisel away at the rock, you know, I gotta be very careful. Gotta be very careful because if you break the fossil uh, in any way, it could cost them thousands of dollars, 
right? Archaeologists need to be very careful when, when really detailing these fossils. So pretty cool stuff. How it's made. I'm sure you guys heard of, have heard of that show a little bit. But uh, let's go to our last notes for the day, guys, believe it or not. Biogeography. Again, do not write this. That's just discussion. Write this. We all know biogeography. How organisms are spread out, how they're distributed in an area, tells us about their evolution. Okay. So we saw, we said earlier in our video question, similar fossils can be found in widely separated continents. Okay. Uh, we see this a great picture of the ferns, right? How, if you go to Antarctica today, you guys would know would I find any plants? Would I find any ferns? Not at all. Okay. It's a very cold place. It's in the, it's in the South Pole. Okay. But why do we find plant fossils there? Because Antarctica moved and used to be more located towards the equator. All right, so uh, another example of that species is Mesosaurus, kind of that crocodile, alligator looking, looking dinosaur there. And then what do we call that supercontinent? I know you guys have heard of this before. It's called Pangaea, super important. So make sure you write these three points down beneath biogeography in your notebooks on page nine. That is it for the lesson today, students. Again, I've got several uh, messages on Canvas I'm going to answer back to today. And uh, yeah, just again, keep up with the Unit 1 quiz. It was posted yesterday. Again, that's due Friday. We're going to have a notebook check coming up this weekend. We're going to have another quiz coming up this weekend. I'll give you some time to work on those. Again, that, that, takes, places of, that takes place of our test. So make sure your notebook's filled out. Uh, make sure you take those quizzes and make sure you turn in those assignments and you guys are all set. Mr. Campbell, signing out.